the spot. The National Film Board's up-to-the-minute report on what's going on somewhere in Canada. This week and every week, NFB camera crews are on the spot where things are happening, recording the varied and colorful life of Canadians. Tonight, we invite you to join a film board crew on another location. This is Fred Davis speaking to you from Toronto. There's always a great deal of fascination in watching an aircraft in flight, whether it's a small one propeller job or a powerful jet. And we're constantly hearing about the latest developments in aircraft design, both for civilian and defense needs. And an important part in this aircraft designing is whether or not the new aircraft meets the expectations of the design team. And that's where the test pilot comes in. Airplanes are continually tested for performance, so in this week's On the Spot story, we're going to find out something about the work of a test pilot. The man climbing out of this vampire jet here is George Neal, the chief test pilot for de Havilland, Canada. George, uh, I suppose that uh, test pilots have to have a good deal of flying experience behind them. How long have you been flying? Well, I've been flying since 1935, uh, Fred, and I have about uh, 5,000 hours. 5,000? That's a lot of time. I suppose you have to keep in good physical shape all the time, don't you? Oh, yes, we have to keep fit. Uh, we have to pass a medical every six months. And uh, if we have a common cold, why, we have to be careful in flying with it. Mm -hmm. A bad cold, we just can't fly. Well, uh, what about sports? Do you find that they help to keep you in uh, good shape? Yes, uh, sports are a good way of keeping in shape, but we must be careful of what uh, type of sport we uh, use. For instance, uh, we have to be careful not to break any legs or arms. Things like that, I can imagine. Uh, do uh, test pilots generally stick to one type of aircraft in their work? Uh, generally, but uh, we here, we have to uh, be able to fly all the different types that we handle here at uh, any time that they come along. For instance, there's Bill just coming in the chipmunk now, which he has been test flying. George, don't you find it confusing when you're changing from a very small aircraft to a large four-motor job with all those extra dials and controls? <laughs> oh, no, no, you get used to it and become second nature with you after a while. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to fly a beaver here, which has a couple of snags on. If you'd care to go along with me, why, come and see what it's like. I'd like that very much. All right. Oh, it should be trimmed, all right. I'll just see. There we are. There we are. We're flying hands off. So the trim is pretty good. I think we'll okay this one. Uh, now we'll check the flaps, Fred, and see that they're working okay. We'll just do an air check first before we land. down to the landing position. They seem to be working all right. They're quite solid, so that's fine. George, uh, what would happen in the case of testing a single-engine aircraft like this if the uh, engine suddenly stopped? Well, nothing uh, in particular would happen. Uh, it'd be quiet, and uh, you'd start and look for a field to uh, land in, actually. I mean, you just glide down and find a good-looking field and go in and land. You mean to say when the motor stops, you don't lose control? It doesn't just drop down, eh? No, that's right. I'll, I'll show you. Just see what happens.
Now the big question is, uh, I, I trust you've done this before. Can you get us out of this? Oh, sure. I'll start it out this, this quick. There we are. She's going again. That's a wonderful sound, that motor coming <laughs> back to life. <laughs> Which one of these indicators tells us how fast we're going? Uh, this one, Fred. This is our airspeed indicator. We're going about 130 miles per hour. You mentioned airspeed. Does that mean that it might be different according to the ground? Oh, yes. Yeah, much different. For instance, uh, if we had a 30 mile an hour headwind, uh, our speed over the ground would only be uh, 100 miles an hour. time last year I was flying the Otter down over the island and uh, we had a, a 70 mile an hour headwind and of course I was flying at uh, 55 to 60 miles per hour airspeed which meant that we were actually backing up over the ground. Well this was rather, at the time I didn't notice it but the people on the ground in Toronto noticed it and they called into the airport to find out what trouble I was in and whether they could help me out or not. I guess that finishes the testing today. We've cleared all the snags on this airplane. I think we'll go home, and uh, you can stop worrying now. I haven't been very worried. <laughs> Thanks very much, George. Another phase in the test pilot's work is his cooperation with the engineering and design teams on new aircraft. Uh, because of his experience in uh, flying uh, many different types of aircraft, his suggestions are welcomed by the designers. It seems pretty ideal for me. Here, the designer and test the, uh, pilot are discussing the placing of seats. Although the designer has attempted forward. to incorporate every it's possible comfort and convenience, pedal. the design can often be improved upon by the repositioning oh, of the okay. seat or control me, lever at the suggestion to, uh, of the test pilot. A shorter and also a taller person. In this instance, the designer is discussing with the test pilot the steering characteristics of a new type tire on the tail wheel. Bob, uh, at this particular stage, do you find that there are any radical changes in the design of an aircraft? Uh, well, Fred, there's no, no major changes. There's just the normal improvements on the production airplane. I see. I've often wondered how a test pilot feels when he's taking an aircraft off the ground for the first time. Well, on a, on a first flight, Fred, you're naturally uh, a bit on the ball in case anything could go wrong in either the airframe or engine or control-wise. You want to be on top of it if it does. I see. Well, that's how you feel for production aircraft. Now, what about when a brand new design comes along? Uh, is the uh, test pilot experiencing any great amount of fear when he takes off in that for the first time? Well, the, the type of fear he'd have, Fred, wouldn't be what you're thinking of. Uh, it's more like an actor on opening night. He uh, He's flying the airplane for the first time, and all the engineering and, and design people are watching, and, and uh, he has the responsibility for the whole thing. And it's, it's more stage fright. He's just uh, a little apprehensive in case he doesn't come through in all departments himself. It's more like a performance rather than the safety of the thing. Eh? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thanks very much, Bob. Well, now we're going to see a demonstration of the maneuverability of a de Havilland Otter, uh, which George Neal has arranged for us. And from this, we'll be able to get a better idea of some of the other tests that an aircraft must go through. Even in this jet age, there is still a great need for general utility airplanes, required for use in places which are inaccessible to other types of aircraft. In this regard, the Otter was specifically designed as a load carrier, a veritable pack horse of the air. At full gross load, the Otter, from a standing start, can get off the ground with only a run of 100 yards. This is important where natural hazards, such as trees or hills, surround the takeoff area. Another outstanding feature of the Otter is its ability to fly at very low speeds. Right now it's going by at a mere 55 miles an hour. This has many advantages when the airplane is needed for search and rescue work and the dropping of supplies. Besides being able to take off in a short distance, the Otter, because of its steep angle of approach, 
can land in equally small areas. We've just seen a beaver airplane equipped with floats taking off from a special dolly. This is to enable the company to deliver a seaplane from the factory directly to its water destination in a very speedy and satisfactory manner. Now we're going to see this aircraft going through some water tests. The test pilot taxis this beaver seaplane so that he can determine if the spray guards on the floats are keeping the water from hitting the propeller. This is important as water spray can definitely damage the propeller. Here the pilot is testing the seaplane for proper radius of turn. This is necessary to check that the water rudders are properly rigged to give the shortest possible turning radius. Many people have the impression that a test pilot is a reckless daredevil type of person due to the fascinating and adventurous life he leads. Well, perhaps this did apply in the early days of airplanes, but there is no place in this highly specialized field for that type of person today. Mrs. Fowler, while we're waiting for uh, your husband to change, I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling me about uh, how a test pilot's wife feels about her husband being in this business. Do you worry about him? Well, I have lots of confidence in Bob, and I don't worry too much. Well, what about uh, when you first met him? Uh, did, did it take uh, a great deal of effort to get used to a pilot? Oh, no. My father's a pilot, so oh. I've been used to flying since I was that high. Now, what about the case of, uh, of another test pilot's wife who didn't have that advantage? Do you think they might worry a little more than you do? Oh, I don't think they do. There aren't many of us in the business, but the girls I know don't. Oh. I suppose one big advantage, though, in this type of work is that he has... Uh, businessman's hours. He's not away like a, an airline pilot might be, wouldn't you say? Uh, well, he does work nine to five, and he has his weekends, but he does go away on a few trips. He's been down in South America a couple of times. Is that, well, that's for the company, is it? Yes, he's delivered airplanes and demonstrated a few. Oh, I see. Well, I've been finding out some of your secrets, Bob. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Fowler. We'll be seeing you, Bob. Bye. 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 Well, we've been able to observe some of the work done by test pilots. And you know, with all the thousands of aircraft flying safely throughout the world today, his contribution has helped immeasurably in the progress and advancement of this air age. Now, this is Fred Davis speaking to you from Toronto and inviting you to join us again next week at this time when the National Film Board will bring you another on-the-spot Canadian story.